Welcome everyone, my name is Ryan Schaefer and this tutorial is an introduction to Away3D. Today I'll be showing you the basics of getting up and running with Away3D. But first let's take a look at what we're going to build here today. Okay, as you can see we've got this animated model and we've loaded him into a 3D space. And we've also got some basic controls for camera and character movement. So I'll go ahead and close that. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is download the Away3D source files. And you can do that here at Away3D.com slash download. We're going to be working with the latest version, which is the 4.1.1 beta. So if you just click here, you can download those source files. But we're also going to be working with some assets that are included with the examples. So go ahead and download those as well. Once you have the files downloaded, we can go ahead and set up our project. Now for this tutorial I'm going to be using the Flash Develop IDE, but you can use you know whatever you're comfortable with. So I'll open up Flash Develop and we want to create a new project. It's going to just be a regular ActionScript 3 project, so we can select that here. Now we need to select a save location for the project. We've got one here somewhere. I'm just going to call this away 3d intro click OK you can see flash develop actually generates some directories and some files for us so we've got the source directory here with a main.as file and we've also got a bin directory and that's where it's going to output the SWF now before we add the away 3d files I want to go ahead and make sure our project settings are set up properly so come to project properties up here and you can see here we're using Flash Player 10.1, but with Away 3D, we're actually going to want to use at least Flash Player 11. So we'll make sure we set that. Hit OK. So now we're ready to add the Away 3D source files that we downloaded. So wherever you extracted those, go ahead and go there, and you're going to want to grab both the Away 3D folder and the COM folder. Just copy those. Come back to your project here. And we're going to want to paste them in this source directory. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to want to use some of the assets from the example files. So let's go ahead and add a new folder here. I'm just going to call it Assets. So I'm going to go to that directory where I had extracted the example files. And we want to go into Embeds. And the first thing we'll do is grab our character files. So go into this P Knight folder. We'll grab the MD2 file, which is the actual model data. Then we'll also grab a texture for him. We'll copy those, paste them into assets. And we'll come back to embeds. We're going to go to terrain. And we'll grab the beach texture. Why not? All right, we're almost done here. We got one more set of files to grab, and that's going to be our skybox. So I'm just going to take all these sky underscore images. Again, just copy those over. Okay, now we've got all the assets that we're going to need for our project. Now we're ready to jump into some code. So we'll come over here to the init function, and we're going to start out by just setting up our stage. So first we'll set the scale mode. And Flash Develop actually has a pretty handy function. If you just hold Control Shift 1, it'll automatically import whatever you have highlighted as long as it can find it. And we're going to set this scale mode to no scale. We're also going to set the alignment. to the top left. Now the stage is set up for us, it's time to get into some actual Away 3D. So the first thing we want to do is create a new function here called init view. And again, Control Shift 1 can generate functions for you, so we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll have a variable here named view. And we're going to set that to a new view 3D. 
We actually want this to be a private member of the class. So again, control shift one is your friend, declare private variable, there you go. So the view is very important in a way 3D, that's actually where everything is gonna be rendered. So let's come down here back to our init view function and we'll just set a few properties on this. We'll just set the background color to black. We can set the anti-aliasing. We'll go ahead and set that to four. And then we can add our view to the display list. Now the view also comes with a built-in camera and we're gonna go ahead and set that up a little bit, just change the angle that we're looking at. So we wanna pull the camera back a little bit on the Z axis. And we're gonna raise it just a little bit on the Y. So this kind of works different from vanilla flash where with Away 3D, the higher the number on the Y, the closer to the top of the screen you are, whereas in flash that would be bringing you towards the bottom. Now we're gonna tell the camera to just look at a new position. Say new vector 3D. And that's just gonna aim the camera to look at the zero, zero, zero coordinate. Just about done here, we also wanna set up the camera lens. So we'll say new perspective lens. And the default value of 60 is kind of a narrow field of view, so we're gonna up that a bit and go with 90. Oh, and then we're also gonna set the distance that the camera can see. So that's lens.far. And for this tutorial, I'm gonna set that to 5,000. You can set that to whatever you want that works you know, with your game. So with that done, our view is all set up and ready to go. So the next thing I wanna do here is actually add a new class to this project. So I'm gonna come up here to source, say add new class, and I'm gonna call it resource. And what this resource class is gonna do is just hold all those images that we brought into the assets folder earlier so that we have them and they're easily available whenever we need them. So to start off, we'll just do an embed here. Oops, got my parenthesis there. So the path to the first image is gonna be just assets and we want that beach image. So there's actually quite a few images in this folder and rather than type that all out, I'm just gonna copy and paste this and we'll change some of these names here. So you can see for the skybox, for example, we have a negative and a positive for every axis here. So we've got the negative X, we'll do the positive one next. I'll change this to the Y. And we'll get the Z as well. And these last two beach things we need to change. One's gonna be the model texture. For that we're going to use the p1.png file. And the last one we're going to do is the model data, which is that md2 file here. So we'll just come over here, p9.md2. And for this one we also need to specify a mime type. And we're going to use application octet stream. over so we can see everything. 
Okay, so now we've got all of our resources embedded so that we can easily get them whenever we need them. We'll come back to main now. And we'll create a new function called create ground. The first thing we want to do here is make a new variable. It's going to be a bitmap. And we want to grab that beach image from the resource file. So new resource.beach, we'll say as bitmap. Now for away 3D, we need to create a texture material out of that bitmap. So we'll say new texture material. And we can't just pass in the bitmap, so we'll use this special class called cast. Say bitmap texture. And that'll take in the bitmap data from our ground image. Set smoothing and repeat to true. Okay, so now we've loaded in that beach bitmap and we've created a texture material from it. The next thing we need to do is create a geometry to apply that texture to. So this is actually going to be a private class variable. So we'll come up to the top and say private var ground. It's going to be a mesh. So we can come back down here. Say ground equals new mesh. And you can see it wants some kind of geometry. Well, it's just going to be a flat plane. So we'll say new plane geometry. And for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to make it fairly large, just so we don't run out of room when we're moving our character around. So I'll say 10,240 for both the width and the height. Just segment it a little bit. Now we're going to pass in that texture material from above. So now our ground is created. We need to go ahead and add it to our view. So we'll say view.scene.addChild ground. If we run this now, you might expect to see the terrain here, but instead you don't. You just see this blank white screen. And we'll go ahead and fix that now. So up here in init, underneath the create ground function, let's go ahead and add an event listener. We'll do enter frame. We'll call the function update. And we'll just put it right down here. So to actually see anything with away 3D, we need to call view.render. And now when we run this, we should see our terrain. Yep, there we go. So next we're going to go ahead and add the skybox. So right underneath create ground, we'll make a new function, create skybox. I'm going to put this just underneath update. Create skybox, there we go. And for this function, we're going to need two more class variables. So we'll come up here to the top. We'll do cube texture. That's going to be a type bitmap cube texture. And we'll do the skybox itself, which is a type skybox. Okay, now let's come back down to our create skybox function. Here we're going to need bitmaps for all of our skybox images. And remember, there was a positive and a negative for each of the three axes. So we'll start with the X. We'll do positive X. New resource. We'll do sky positive X as bitmap. And again, in the interest of time, I'm just going to copy and paste this. So there's a negative X. This one will be Y.
and we'll take care of the Z here. All right, there we go. So now we can set up this bitmap cube texture. And you can see that it takes in all of those bitmap datas. So we're gonna say positive x dot bitmap data. Come down here just to keep things nice looking. We'll do the y. And the Z. And with that bitmap cube texture filled out, we can apply it to our skybox. So we'll say skybox equals new skybox. And we'll pass in that cube texture. And the last thing we need to do is add it to our views scene. So view.scene, add child, skybox. And now when we run this, we should see our terrain and the sky also. And there you go. So we've got sky, we've got terrain. The next thing we want to add is the player. So we'll come up here to init. We'll make a create player function. I'll put that just under update. Create player. And for the player, we're going to load that model data. So we'll say new resource dot model data. And remember that model's format is MD2. So Away 3D comes with this handy helper class called Asset Library. Go ahead and import it. And we'll say enable parser. And we're going to say MD2 parser. And we'll go ahead and load that data. And we're also going to need to listen for just a couple of events here. So add event listener. First one is an asset event. Asset complete, so we'll say on asset ready. So we'll need one more. And this is a loader event. And we want to listen for the resource complete. So again, here we'll say on resource ready. And I'm just going to go ahead and create these two functions right away. So for now, I'm just going to put a trace in each of these functions here on asset ready. Come down here and do on resource ready. I just want to show you how this works. When I go ahead and run this, we'll close it. We'll take a look at the output. So you can see that we get a ton of those on asset ready events firing. And then at the very end, we get the on resource ready event. So the first thing we're going to do is listen for this on asset ready event. So each time this event gets fired, you can see this event has an asset property and that has an asset type. So that'll tell us what kind of asset is ready here. And we're going to be interested in just a couple of these. One is asset type mesh. And the other one, animation set. So here we're going to need a couple of variables. And these will be class member variables. So we'll say model mesh for this one. It's going to equal e.asset as mesh. And that is actually the last asset that's going to be ready that we need. So once that happens, we can go ahead and remove this event listener.
down here, we'll have a variable called animation set. And we'll say we want this as a vertex animation set. And I want to go ahead and add both of these to the class. So control shift one, come back here. We'll do it one more time. All right, there we go. So now we can come down here and handle this on resource ready event. And the first thing we're going to want to do is just remove that event listener. So that was a loader event, resource complete, on resource ready. And once this event has fired, that means everything is loaded for that model. We're ready to go ahead and set up our player. And just like we did with the ground, we're going to start by loading in a bitmap. We're going to use the model texture from our resources. And again, we need to create a material. So that's texture material equals new texture material. And then we're going to want to use that cast object, bitmap texture. And we'll send it the bitmap data. Now we want to apply that material to our model. So we'll say model mesh dot material equals material. And I'm also going to scale the model up just a bit. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and create the player object. That's going to be a private class variable. So I'll come up here. I will say private variable player. It's going to be an object container 3D. And then I also want to go ahead and add a reference to the player's animation set. So I'll call it animator. And it's going to be a vertex animator. So those two new class variables will come back down to our on resource ready function. We'll go ahead and create our player here. So new object container 3D. And we're going to add the mesh to this. So add child model mesh. And now we can add the player to the scene. So view.scene.addChild player. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you can see we have the model loaded in, but it's not exactly where we want it. He's sticking through the floor, and he's also facing 90 degrees to the right, when what we actually want is to have him facing straight ahead. So we'll come in here and fix those problems now. We'll say model mesh dot y, and we'll just move him up 100 units. And we're also going to fix his rotation, set the rotation Y to negative 90 degrees. So now he should be standing on the floor and facing straight ahead. There we go. You might be wondering how I got this 100 value here. That's just trial and error. So now we'll go ahead and set up that animator. So we'll say model mesh dot animator equals new vertex animator. We'll pass in that animation set. And then again at the top we created this animator variable and that's just to hold a reference to the model mesh animator. I'm just going to cast that as a vertex animator. So now we have this animator set up, but we don't really know what any of the animations are. We don't know how to use them. So I'm going to show you something here that will give you a list of all the animations contained in this animation set. So we'll say for each var s is a string in animation set dot animation names. And here we'll just trace out s. We'll run this and close it, come down here to our output. And now you can see all of these 
different animations here. These are all the names of the animations that are contained within that animation set. So now if we want to use one of these, we'll just use stand. All we have to do is come up here and say animator dot play stand. And now when I run this, we should see our model actually animating. So there you go, we've got our animated model loaded into the world. We're just about done, but not quite yet. If you noticed, when the program started, the terrain and the skybox showed up, and then the player kind of popped in a little bit later. That's a problem that's pretty easy to fix here. So we'll just come up to the init function. We'll take this add event listener for the update. I'm going to cut that from there. I'm just going to paste it at the bottom of this on resource ready function. So now the view won't render until the player is loaded. Another problem was that the camera angle wasn't exactly ideal. It was kind of close to the player and too low. So we want to change that and give ourselves some control over the camera. So the first thing we're going to do is come up here to the class variables and add a new one here for the camera. This is going to be of type hover controller. And now we'll come back to on resource ready. And we can go ahead and get rid of these animation names. And down here, I'll do create camera. We'll need to create that function now. So in here, we'll say camera equals new hover controller. And we're going to be using the views camera. And the target object is going to be the player. We'll set it behind him, so 180. A tilt angle, we'll use 25. And for the distance, we'll use 350. And again, these are numbers that I just kind of played around with until I found something that I liked. So we're going to set up just a few more parameters on our camera here. We'll set steps to 12. We're going to set a minimum tilt angle. That'll be 5. Then the max tilt angle, oops, max tilt angle will be 33. And one more thing, we want to wrap the pan angle, we'll set that to true. If we run this now, we'll see that everything's going to load together and the camera is pulled back to a nicer angle. And this is all well and good, but we still don't have any control over the character or the camera. So we'll go ahead and add that next. To do this, we're going to have to add some more variables to the class. So we'll come back up here to the top, and we're going to add a few booleans here. Move forward. Move back. Move left. And move right. And those are going to be used to control the character but we also want to control the camera, so we're going to add just two more variables here. Mouse down will be a boolean. And we're going to store the previous mouse position. So previous mouse, and that's going to be a point. We'll come down here to init, and we'll initialize all these variables. So move forward is equal to move back move left, equals move right, those are all false. We'll set mouse down to false also. And we'll initialize the previous mouse to just be a new point. All right, now let's jump back down to the on resource ready function. And in here, we're going to add a few event listeners to the stage. First, we're going to listen for keyboard events. On key down. And on key up. We're also going to want to listen to some mouse events. 
mouse down. And mouse up. Okay, we'll start with these. Let's do mouse up first. So whenever the player lets off the mouse, we're just gonna say mouse down is false. And then we'll come up here, and whenever they press the mouse, we wanna say mouse down is true. And we also wanna store the coordinates of this press. So we're gonna do that in our previous mouse variable. So the X will be the event stage X and the Y will be the stage Y and we'll use these later on in the update function but for now I'm just gonna jump into the on key down and on key up so we can get those out of the way as well we'll start with on key up and in here we just wanna switch on the key code and to move our player, we're going to use the familiar WASD configuration that so many PC games use anyway. So we'll check case 87. That's going to be for W. We'll just make a little note here so that we know. And we just want to set these keys to, or these booleans to false whenever the player lets go of the appropriate key. That's going to be our signal to stop moving. So that'll be D. So on key down is going to look very similar to on key up. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Only instead of setting these to false, we want to set them all to true. So first we're going to handle the character movement. So we'll come up here to our update function. And all we want to do here is check each of these Boolean values and see which one is true. So if move forward is true, we want the player to move forward. Uh, and just for a generic speed, I'm just going to use 24 for now. And we also want the animator to play a new animation and we'll say run. And we want to check the others. So if move back, player.move backward, 24. And again, we're going to want the animator to play run. And we need to check the left and the right. I'm just going to copy and paste this animator.play run because we're going to use it in all of them. check the right player dot move right 24 paste that run animation and then if none of the keys are pressed we'll just have the animator play the stand animation so that should take care of the character movement but we also want to be able to control the camera so let's do that now We'll see if the mouse is being held down. Then what we want to do is just get the difference between the current mouse position and the previous mouse position. So we'll check stage.mousex minus previous mouse.x. We'll check the y difference as well. Stage.mouse y 
minus previous mouse dot y. And then what I'm going to do next is actually put a cap on that x difference so that when you're moving the mouse side to side, you don't get real wild or jerky motions. So we're just going to cap that at 10 in both directions. So I want to see if the x difference is greater than 10. Uh, I'll just cap it at 10. And if it's less than negative 10, we'll cap it on the low end to negative 10. And then we want to update the camera's pan angle. And also the player's rotation Y. We'll set the camera's tilt angle with a Y difference. And then the last thing we need to do is just update that previous mouse position. So the previous mouse X becomes stage.mousex and the same for the Y becomes stage mouse Y. We'll go ahead and run this. And now I have control over the character and the camera. So I can run around the world, I can rotate, I can move the camera up and down. We just have a pretty basic third person control setup here. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. We actually did quite a bit. We loaded terrain, a skybox, a fully animated 3D character that we can control. So I hope you had fun and thank you for watching.